to create a block style business letter. Now I have the business letter already typed out so that we don't have to worry about typing. We're just worrying about formatting and using Microsoft Word. This is Microsoft Word 2010. It's with the using ribbons. So if you have 2007 or 2010, it'll look the same up here on the screen. I don't have my screen fully extended as large as possible because it's better for the video to have it slightly smaller. So yours may look slightly different. You may see more options than I'm showing right here. But everything that, that um, is in the word processing program is here. So let's start. This letter is, well, it should be the default we can see here is the Microsoft default, which is Calibri 11 point, and it's a normal style. This is not what we need for a business letter. So let me turn on the show hide. This button right here, the show hide button, is so important. It's going to show us all of the non-printing characters. So I'm going to turn it on. It's a toggle switch on and off, off, on, off, on. So you can see every time I hit the space bar, I get a little dot and it shows me that that is the space bar was hit. Every time I hit the enter key, the paragraph mark shows up. So I've hit James and company, enter, 123 Elliott Street, Northwest, enter. Now, when I turn this off, it, there's too much space between the word James and company and the address for that. So this is a letter without letterhead. So the, the return address of the person who is sending it, their personal address, is right here. And I don't want all of this space between it. So I'm not going to use the Microsoft Calibri 11 point normal as my default for writing business letters. For business letters, I want Times New Roman 12 point, no spacing. And I'll add the spacing by using blank lines where I want it to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my show hide so I can see my uh, non-printing characters. And I'm going to select the whole document. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. I can click and drag all the way down. Um, in this area right here, it's called the selection bar area. If I triple click, one, two, three, the whole document gets selected. So I'll do that. And I'm going to change, make the changes that I need for a proper business letter, block style business letter. Block style means everything is left aligned, and we can see it is, it's left aligned there. Here's center, here's right, and here's fully justified. So it's all left aligned, that's fine. We want it to be Times New Roman. So you can see that I use Times New Roman a lot personally, so it's in my recently used fonts. If I didn't have it right there, I could just start to type. You can see that Calibri is selected. If I start to type, Times New Roman automatically pops up. So I'm going to choose Times New Roman, and I want it to be 12 point font. So I choose 12 point. I can also use this grow font, but I tend to use this box. And I want it to be no spacing. Now, when I use no spacing, now it looks horrible because it's all squished together. But I need to choose where the spacings are. So here's my return address. I'm going to hit the Enter key to separate it from the date. And the date needs to be separated from the inside address, which is who the letter is going to. And it needs to be separated by two or three blank spaces. I tend to use two, some people use three. Um, here is the inside address and it ends after the zip code. So I hit the enter key. I have one blank space. Dear Miss Reynolds, I need a blank space. I need a comma here or a, set or a colon. Some offices prefer colon, some offices comma. I'll use commas. Um, okay, so I have it. One enter. Here's my first paragraph. I know this is the end of the paragraph because I see the paragraph mark. So I need to hit the enter key. It says, in addition to the lunches we discussed, we will need the following items. 
All right, so there are three items. So those do not need a blank space between them. And I'm gonna hit the Enter key. I will enclose a spec list. Okay, there's the end of a paragraph. I hit the Enter key. I go to this paragraph. I hit the Enter key. Here is Sincerely. Now, this is the closing. And after the closing, I need space for a signature. And some people's signature is very big. So we always leave three blank spaces for someone to um, handwrite their signature. And then here is uh, the, the name of the person, because often signatures can't be read. So there's the name typed out. Here's the title of that. David Johnson is the HR manager. Um, and then there's a blank space. And then the typist's initials go right here. So I'm going to type my initials. And I see up here, I will enclose a spec list. So there's one other document that's going to be inside this letter. So I need to have the word enclosure. But watch what happens. I've said my initials, CW, and now I'm going to hit the Enter key so I can type enclosure. And I, you see that the C has been capitalized. So I'm going to type the word enclosure, and then I'll go back and fix that. So what happened is there's a feature turned on inside this Microsoft Word program that says the beginning of every new sentence needs to be capitalized. Well, it thinks that this is a new sentence, but in fact it's not. Typist initials are always lowercase. So I just backspace it out and, and hit a lowercase c. So let's talk about this for a minute. Backspace versus delete. On your keyboard, you'll have both the backspace key, and I'm going to click right in the middle of Sincerely here. And when I use the backspace key, it goes back towards the left. When I sincerely, when I hit the delete key, it goes to the right or forward. So you can use the backspace key or the delete key, depending on which direction you want to go. Now, I really don't want to get rid of the word sincerely, so I can use the undo or the um, clear to put back that word that I did. So let me, I'm just going to continue to undo here, and it's going to eventually bring back, oh, I went too far, because now it's a capital C. So I'm going to redo the typing. So remember our quick access toolbar, we turned features on and off, and I always have my undo and redo turned on because I use those often. You can see how far I can go back. I can undo 18 actions. Well, I don't want to, but I could. All right, so I have a red squiggly underline. The red squiggly underline often, not 100% of the time, but often it means there's some kind of spelling error. Well, I know this isn't true. CW are my initials, so I just leave it. I ignore it. I know that Mrs. Reynolds' name is spelled correctly here. If I right-click, it'll give me a different spelling that it wants to use. And it says that I should be spelling it like this, but in fact, this person spells her name without the Y. So I'm going to leave it. I can ignore, ignore all, or I can add it to the dictionary. If this was someone I regularly mailed letters to, I would add her name to my dictionary, but I don't want to do that, so I'm going to ignore all. All right, let's turn off our show hide here for a minute. And we have the return address, the date, the inside address, the greeting or salutation. We have the body of the letter. We have the closing. We have the name, the title, the typist initials, and the word enclosure. So this letter is complete as a block style business letter. Now, I want to show one other thing in this video. We used the no spacing style here. And let me turn this back to the Microsoft normal for a minute. So what this is, is every time the enter key was hit, the normal style puts a blank space here. Now, our blank spaces, if I look down here, are Times New Roman 12 point. 
Times New Roman 12 point because that's what we said they were. We don't know what this blank space, space is because there's no um, paragraph marker for us to look. So to be able to see what this blank space is, right here in the paragraph grouping, we have a little arrow and that arrow opens up a bigger dialog box for us. So if I click on that dialog box, it shows me that the, the spacing after this line is actually 10 point and it says that the line spacing is multiple. It's not single. So when I use no spacing, it means single space with zero before and zero after. But this um, the default that Microsoft has is 10 point after and it's, oh no, this is uh, 1.15 I think they have it at. This is the Microsoft default. So I don't want that. But I could change it right here. I could say zero and single. It's kind of the long way to do it and I could do the same thing here. Zero and single. Okay. And so now you see it looks like I've used the no spacing. Oh, I still have it on this one because I have that extra space right here. Or I could highlight all three of them, hit the paragraph marker and say zero and single. And they're all back to the no spacing style. It says normal because in reality, I didn't change the style. I changed the paragraph information. So I'm gonna hit no spacing. All right, so now the whole document is no spacing. And that's your standard block style business format. Everything is left aligned. We do not hit the tab key or hit the enter key how many times before the beginning of a paragraph. We don't need to. What this blank space says is new paragraph, new paragraph, new paragraph. When you put the use the tab key, or space in at the beginning of a paragraph, what you're saying is new paragraph. But we already have the blank line that shows the new paragraph. So we don't need that. This is the block style. Everything is left aligned. So open your word processing program. Open a document. It'll have a blank document when you open it. It'll look like this. And go investigate your fonts, your font sizes, if you have the uh, font grow or font smaller. Um, investigate left, center, and right aligned. So I'm going to type my name here, and it's right aligned, it's center aligned, it's left aligned. Fully justified is more for um, long reports where you want something to be uh, to start exactly on the left margin and end exactly on the right margin. Pardon me. Um, and, and look at your paragraph dialog box and see what your default is. And then play around with the styles, spacing and no spacing. So on your word processing program, all of these things should be here. Have fun. All right, so we have our finished business letter. Now let's make sure that we remember how to save it. You can see I haven't named it, so I'm going to hit save or save as. It doesn't matter. It will bring me up to the save as dialog box. I can put it either in my flash drive that I have plugged in. I can put it in my docs um, in the computer. I can put it on the desktop, which is often what I do if I'm just practicing and playing around. So I'm going to call this document Practice Biz Letter. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop. So I hit the desktop there. I can see that's where it's being saved in. And I'm going to hit Save. Now if I wanted to print it, if we remember, I would go to File and go to Print, and here's my backstage view. I have one page, and I would just hit Print. Or I could go up to my Quick Print toolbar and hit Print, and it's printing. All right, give it a try.